Now I have my chance to embarrass Linux by going into Bloom Bounce, playing it with the sounds it should have. It's proof positive Linux sucks. Or I have the chance to embarrass myself because I was dumb enough to say that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in because I'm going to use Pogo over here in Windows. And I've signed in. I remember that. Let's see how this goes now. Let's just see. Let's see how confident I am. I'm not going to have how. Let's see. Yeah, sure, I'm going to have the same sound problems I had in Linux. I'm sure I will. Gonna have to whack it, Linux. Okay, let's see what happens. Come on, load up. If you haven't had a DUI, you're lucky. And we're done. Or are we? There's my the song, let's start the game. Alright, let's use and abuse this like we did before. I'm not even going to bother restarting Firefox. I'm just going to wait here. I'm going to file my nails links. Because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to have sound. Yeah, uh-huh. And then what are you going to do about that, huh? Are you going to say the proprietary software has bugs, huh? Are you going to say that, Linux? Are you going to say that? Let's see that, huh? Let's see it. Let's see it. Oh, is that a, is that a song? Is that a song? Is that... Did it, am I hearing a song? Am, am I hearing all the effects I'm supposed to hear? In this game, is is that what's happening? Do I have earwax? Let's see. Oh no, 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 no! It's, it's my imagination. No, it's not. No, it's not my imagination. It's working. Let's go. Oh wait, maybe I should try the buggy Internet Explorer. Let's see if that works. Well, let's see if that breaks down. Okay, let's try this again. With all this buggy proprietary software. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It's all buggy proprietary software we can't use. Bugs bugs are living forever. They're just staying forever in my balloon bounce game. It's just, there it is. Oh, and if I put the mute on, is it going to mean I can't have sound in my game? Let's find out. Let's find out if that happens. Let's find out, Linux. Let's find out. Huh? Huh? You want to find out? Oh, can I? Oh, I have a timer. I have a timer on my camera. It means I'm not going to run out of time. I think, oh, is that a, is that a song? Is that a song? Did I just hear a song? Yeah, I just heard a song. What do you think about that, Linux? Huh? Huh? I'm going to start doing this from now on. I'm just going to go into Windows and just demonstrate how Windows kicks Linux ass. And maybe the developers might get their shit together. Now let's try it in in the buggy Internet Explorer, the buggy one. The, you know, the buggy that we're afraid to have take over the internet. All the Linux developers don't want this to take over the internet. Oh, it'd be bad. Oh boy. I'm really wondering if this is going to work. I'm shaking my boots. Oh boy.
So Linux is for, for lemmings. Software doesn't work as well. Windows is very affordable. Your time is not worth wasting in Linux for a lot of things if you want it to work right. Um, Linux is at most a tool. And if you don't know how to use it as a tool, it's, it's a toy. Let's do it again. Let's see how this buggy Internet Explorer crashes. Oh, where's my blue screen of death? Where's my blue? Oh, it's not there. It's not there. It's really, it's not there. Oh, let's wait for it. Let's wait for the blue screen of death to come. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's keep waiting. It's going to keep happening again and again. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. And then Linux is going to fail. It's going to fail. And it's going to fail. There you go. The JDK is open. We know that the system is able to communicate with Java sometimes, and it's not able to in other times. And that's it. And that's all you need to know. And it's all you need. And most everything else is just like this. Most everything else in Linux is second rate. So, uh, did I have to spend two hours trying to debug this thing and figure out, you know? finally narrow it down to maybe if I deleted my .java file in my home directory I'd be able to get sound? No. Not at all. Just worked. Worked great. No problems. I'm happy. Um, most people are going to be happy and most people that are going to use Linux are not going to be happy. And they're not going to use it anymore and they're not going to go back to it and they're going to think it's a piece of shit. Well, there you go. What are we going to change? To What are we as a community going to do to change this. Well, probably not doing the same thing we do already, right? Maybe we should start soliciting contributions to, to various projects. Maybe we should stop breaking shit all the time, including bootloaders and cameras and, you know, make sure that the stuff works right before you put it out, release early, release often, results in the trash operating system that I've demonstrated for the now, uh, for hours now. So there you go. That's my conclusion. I don't hate Linux. I want Linux to be good or better, but all this stuff about users are too lazy and stupid to learn how to use Linux right or the proprietary this, it's all bullshit. Basically, at the end of the day, you know, Am I, gonna have, am I gonna have a chance to have a camera problem with my audio being out of sync with my picture? Fuck no. Am I gonna have a chance of having this balloon bounce ever, ever, ever not have sound? No. I'm not gonna have any of these problems I've been having with Linux. Am I gonna have, if I dual booted two Windows installations, am I gonna have a shitload of nonsense entries? I'm gonna have to keep going back and changing my config file. I'm not gonna have to do that. Not with Windows. I might get rooted, I might have my machine used as a, as a zombie, I might have all my personal information traded, but in that respect, <clears throat> Linux is probably better to use to do anything that you care about over the internet. But if for anything you want to do for fun, that if, I don't give a fuck if someone steals my uh, pogo.com login, you know, this, uh, the free version that I have, you know, that I watch commercials on, but, you know, to pay for it. Who cares, right? So that that's my opinion of the whole thing. Um, basically, if you want something that's going to work right and work well, you, you use Windows. That's it. Don't even fuck around with Linux. Um, developers, uh, if you want people to actually use what you work on or you just want to waste your time working on shit no one's going to use and no one's going to appreciate, keep doing what you're doing and we're just going to keep on the same old path and it doesn't matter how benevolent your intentions are or you want to help people or you want to give someone 
a chance to have a computer where they, where they wouldn't be able to otherwise afford one, well, you're wasting your time because they'll just pirate the They'd rather use a pirate or so a copy of Windows than Linux. And that's just balloon bounce. There's a whole bunch of other things that just aren't working. So you can't just do what you want. You can't do what you want with Linux. You can do what you want with Windows. Even though the source code is closed in Windows and it's not closed in Linux. Doesn't matter. I'm not a programmer. Majority of people are not programmers. Get it? <laughs> That's the deal. And I am. I'm just getting started. I'm going to make. I'm going to spend as much time bagging on Linux as I did trying to figure out how to get my camera to work. Plus, as much time as I try to get Balloon Bounce to work. Probably the only good thing you could probably do with a Linux with Linux is probably get one of your older computers, like say 386 or something, install it on there and use it as a firewall in between your your Swiss cheese Windows machine and the internet. You know, <laughs> so they'd have to root that thing first to get to your Windows. That's about it, really. And you can probably just go out and buy yourself a Netgear box and get the same thing. Uh, now, as far as servers are concerned, uh, Linux works great and works like this on servers because they they keep things consistent. On the desktop, they don't. They don't give a fuck. Um, there's been there was discussions. I, I saw at kernel.org between some guy that that simply wanted to be able to have the kernel remember what uh, what lettering number to give a a, a, like a USB drip device to plug into your computer there and have it survive over reboots and you know Linus didn't want to put that in the kernel fuck for you know maybe you know belongs in user space well they can't get anything right in user space the only person who can get anything right is, is, is Linus maybe right so no if you want your operating system Linus to be the best one out there uh, you gotta you're gonna have, you're probably gonna have to get your ass out of the kernel and start doing shit in the user space maybe to get things right. But I don't even think any one person could fix all the problems that are out there. No one really does. Some people think, most of these things are just half-ass programs. They're just half-ass solutions. They're really not anything serious. Yeah, you can use it. You can get by with it. And if you don't do much in your computer, you might be happy. But that's about it. It's been that way for about eight years, at least ten years, who knows. Um, and that's why, you know, when I've already talked about all this stuff, I've talked about the stupid things distribution do, where they bow down to the Free Software Foundation, fuck the Free Software Foundation, put the goddamn drivers in there. Okay, secondly, fuck Pulse Audio, don't even fucking put it in there, just stick, once, out, once sound is mature, just fucking stick with it. And if Pulse Audio wants to fit into Alza's framework, it can. But besides that, fuck them. You know, I, I saw some people going to the Pulse Audio page complaining about certain things that Pulse Audio did to try to secure up and not allow root to run Pulse Audio or various different things or keep the not to have two people running the program at the same time so it couldn't be exploited, etc., etc., etc. It's so over secure though, and the guy that kept coming back and saying, you know, these are the practical reasons why I can't do this or that with my programs and they're talking about well just do this or that with it and have this or that user set it you know it just doesn't work uh, most people aren't programmers going to be able to go in there with some pro program they didn't even fucking make and, and make it so now suddenly you know this or that user is using it at login time and this you know it's just you know and you get these big huge flame wars and I saw the same thing over at the grub um at the Grub Developers List, where um, some guy was saying, oh, I'd just rather be lazy than, you know, people are saying, you know, we got a fundamental problem with Grub's design. It's locked out um, FreeBSD as far as I could see. I don't remember what the logic problem was, but Grub 2 now can't be used with FreeBSD or from inside FreeBSD. Or people, they had a whole thread, two pages long, just trying to figure out how to boot FreeBSD and stuff.